Oh, it's nine o'clock, or eight o'clock UT summertime. Hello to our viewers um, and welcome to... Um, and I wanted to start the interview, David, with some uh, biograph uh, biography stuff. Now, in your Wikipedia article, um, it says that you were in North Shields and grew up in 1970s London. Now, your father was Adrian Malone, who made... Uh, and uh, you studied in America, where you studied... Well, biological anthropology. Now, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, your early life, where you went to school, and how you went to Swarthmore, which is quite an elite college. Um, was there a culture shock? Is there a, any story in there? Well, going to Swarthmore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose there was, because um, when we lived in England, I just went to the. Um, Ashford Grammar School, Ashford and Middlesex. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we moved to America. And um, I, we I ended up going to two private schools, which I'd never been to before. Um, and that really was a culture shock. Um, and I went there because my parents were told that American uh, state schools, whether they were or not, but that's what my parents believed. Uh, and then when it came to university, I wanted to go to the best university I could and the most left wing, the most left wing college in America. Right. Um, what I can say is if that's the most left wing college in America, they need help. Um, and it was full of um, very rich boys and girls. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I spent my four years complaining, really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't like a lot of them, uh, but it was a very good university. Uh, but I, I found I didn't have a lot in common with them. <laughs> right. And did you further degree after your, I'm assuming it's a Bachelor of Science? Or... Yeah. Um, I didn't, actually, Roger. Uh, some, in some ways, it's, it's one of the few things in life I look back and I think, oh, maybe I should have. Um, because not having, uh, I didn't go on um, to do a, a high degree. In some ways, I thought I should have, because not a, a, a PhD means that you, if you get in, into any kind of discussions with people, uh, they tend to assume that you don't know what you're talking about, which is very annoying. Okay, well, but I didn't, because um, what I enjoy is between things, you know, the borders between art and science, or the border between this science and that science. And I realized you couldn't do that in a PhD. Right. Um, you have to plow an established furrow, and I just didn't want to do that. So I didn't go on. Um, perhaps it was a mistake, but the job I've done since um, has suited me because it's all about making connections between things. So. Yeah. So, what, so you university. did your bachelor's degree, and I mean, obviously in between. Right. So you you did your bachelor's degree, and what year yeah. did you graduate? Uh, 1985. I, mean, I have to say, I was at university at a dreadful time in America. Um, it, to be there during Reagan and Thatcher was just awful, and it was also the it was so libertarian and right wing. Mm -hmm. um, I was in endless arguments with people, but well, this supposedly left-wing college. Yeah. Well, it was left-wing, but left-wing in an American context. Right. Um, so, I mean, left-wing amongst fairly wealthy middle-class intellectual people, or their children, okay. uh, to me struck me as about I don't know, Lib Dem. Okay, this was quite good training for the Green Party then. I. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, between 1985 when you left uh, Swarthmore, um, that, that gives us seven years to the first documentary I've got you here listed in your biography. Um, yeah. What about the interregnum between, uh, you know, how does a, a graduate of uh, biological anthropology, whatever the mm. hell that is. I, I think. <laughs> um, I, I did. I have to confess, I did make that up. There is at the time there was no such thing as bioanthropology, but I quickly realised that 
how impressed people were with your made with you how impressive the name was i see so bioanthropology sounds very long and very impressive so yeah. okay well, th th there's a wikipedia article now about bio uh, biological no, anthropology excellent. so it's now a category <laughs> so <laughs> excellent but the, um, the, the, the time you're talking about, the first year after, after I graduated, I was a teacher. I was a teacher in America teaching fundamental biology for a year until they fired me. Um, uh, I taught in uh, an inner city school in a place called East Orange, and it was by far and away the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, whenever I um, felt sorry for myself, I think back to that experience, and then I think, yeah, well, this is nothing. <laughs> where, where, where is East Orange? It's right next to Newark, Newark, New Jersey. And it is a, well, it was a truly horrible place. Very poor um, and just violent. And also that was the year that crack hit um, East Orange. I don't know about elsewhere, but that was the year I lost. I lost several kids to crack. Wow. Um, yeah. This was in um, 1986. 85, 86, 85, 86 yeah, that, that yeah. academic year, um, and yeah, it, they, they were, looking back, they were great kids, at the time it was really, really hard, I had no training as a teacher, I just went and did it, um, and yeah, it was very, very tough, it was all they could do to survive, never mind learn, um, um, what and age they group, did learn. What age group were you teaching? Uh, between 15 and 18, depending on how many times they repeated things. Um, my kids, I, you know, being the, in the department, I got to teach the, the, the lowest stream, or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. So the other teachers merrily referred to my kids as the animals. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they were tough. Mm -hmm. They were really tough kids, but they had really tough lives. Yeah. Um, and then, as I say, they fired me, so I did that for a year. Um, and then went back, came back home, I mean, back to Europe, tried to get all kinds of jobs, you know, got turned down a lot. Finally got uh, a job blasting in a tunnel in the Alps through friends. I have lots of friends in France. Mm -hmm. I lived there for quite a while. Um, and then um, almost back accident, got a job uh, at the BBC. I, I, I wasn't trying to get a job at the BBC. I was in contact with someone at the BBC asking for their help to put me in contact with some academics. Um, had a long conversation, and then the fellow said, um, by the way, do you want a job? By pure it. luck, I happened to be having this conversation at the time when the next week they wanted to recruit a researcher. Okay. And he said, and I, I applied and, I, and, and got the job. Yeah, but I have to say, until that point, I would have said, oh, I know that free will's rubbish. It's all predestined fate. Is this philosophical <laughs> point that you're making there, or...? Well, no, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, it does undermine your 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 feelings about free will when you find that you end up doing the same job as your dad and you never want, not for a, a nanosecond ever wanted to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know the feeling. Um, so, so you went back from America and you went to France. Then you dug a great big hole through the Alps. And well, uh, so, so this researching job. job was what was that in the yes, late eighties? Right. Yeah, I, mean, I was just hired as a researcher, and you know, it, that was the very end of the old BBC. Um, the BBC changed from the old. Okay, BBC, so you were there at the there. time that um, Alistair Milne got the boot. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, and uh, it, it it was. Um, it was still there at the end. I was working for three different producers. They would come in and say, oh, find me the number of CT scanners in London. And someone else would say, find me, you know, the acreage uh -huh. that planted with this or that or the other. And I just did that. And then, of course, what happens is after you've done that for a while, one day someone comes in and says, oh, we need someone to do this short film. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, you. Yeah, you in the corner there. You do it. And off you go. Okay. So, so were mm -hmm. you in a, like a general news team, or was it attached to one of the, you know, a, a program we might have known about? I think. You, did you uh, well, it was a program which was on the air for I can't remember now four or five years called Antenna um, on BBC Two. It uh -huh. was a, um, a magazine program that ran two twenty-minute films and a ten-minute film, which was supposed to sort of be a complement to Horizon. Okay. And I, I, I worked on. That.
Antenna returns tomorrow and takes us into the world of chaos, a world where the most complex systems of global weather can be affected by the gentle fluttering of a butterfly's wing, and where the simplest systems defy predictability. A new series of Antenna begins tomorrow at 10 past 8 on BBC Two. And then I was sent for two, two punishment duties to Tomorrow's World. When I did very bad things, they would send me to Tomorrow's World. And that um, was a punishment? Well, it was for me. <laughs> and in fairness, Tomorrow's World didn't like me, um, although the editor was very tolerant. Um, I was not good news on Tomorrow's World, wasn't cut out for it. So I would get sent there, yeah. and then at some point I'd do something really dreadful. And then eventually I ended up in Horizon. Okay. So then that led into well, what I was doing career. Um, what, what, well, I, what, I went independent, yeah. What, what's, <laughs> your, what, what's your favourite of the different documentaries that, that you've made that are listed on Wikipedia or others? Well, the, the most political two that I made were which I, I, I like, um, was uh, the 30th anniversary of Horizon, which someone's just pirated and put up on um, YouTube, which was lovely after okay. all this year. Um, it's called Horizon's 30th anniversary, The Far Side. And the other one was called Icon Earth. And both of those films I got in a lot of trouble for and had to defend my job. of the blue earth by now you can see it everywhere i mean it jumps at you from billboards from t-shirts uh, from book covers the economy was uh, controlled by society it was embedded in social relations that's what it was if you control by society today the opposite is the case society has become a mere adjunct of the economy our, our, our prime minister is more than the else the, the managing director of britain inc we in this crazy economy where you can multiply uh, figures on stock markets and computers uh, through speculation and futures trading uh, and never need to have done anything in, in the real material world. And with that kind of artificial creation of wealth, which is keeping the, the actual financial system on the run all the time, um, that system is now requiring more and more of the dismantling of the structures of material security that have been part of, of people's lives. In the new global economy where the wealth of nations is traded daily, security and stability no longer exist. Particularly ICON. Okay, will, will you tell us about ICON Earth? I mean, you've told me about that before. It's a very interesting yeah. story. ICON Earth, I made in 1996. I think it was 86. Basically, I was looking at the then GATT negotiations, you know, the, which was the, yeah. the general agreement on trade and tariffs. When we ratified that round, the Uruguay round, it gave birth to the World Trade Organization. Uh -huh. And I was appalled by it and wanted to do something against globalization. But being in the science department, they wouldn't let me. Yeah. So I then said, well, I know what. Um, I want to make a film about that the image of the blue planet, you know, the little blue planet, um, yeah. uh -huh. as a modern icon, like a religious icon. In other words, an image which tells a whole set of beliefs. And they were willing to commission that, although not the head of Horizon, it was commissioned over his head. Um, they controlled the BBC to commissioned it directly, which made me unpopular. Um, Who was that then? It wasn't Alan Yentob then, was it? Or... No, it was um, Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, and he, he liked my films. And um, so essentially, I did make a film uh, uh, warning about globalization, but in the, uh, under the camouflage of, of a thing about the Earth as a. So 
it was it was a it was a full on piece of propaganda, um, which I really liked. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I have a soft spot for that film. I really, I really like it, and um, had a fantastic interview with um, Teddy Goldsmith. Okay. So uh, he and he and um, Vanna Shiva basically lay out the problems that are now being discussed about globalization. Right, and Teddy Goldsmith is the pub was the publisher and founder of the Ecologist magazine. Yes, and, so James and, Goldsmith's and, brother, and uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, brother Zach, of Zach Goldsmith. Goldsmith. The original corporate radar. Uncle. Right, yes. And yeah. Zach, yeah, Zach Goldsmith's um, uncle. Yeah, uh, yeah, famous from yeah. Richmond and the by election there, which we will probably get on to later. Yeah. Um, now, in that sort of context, you've already mentioned that you were s wanting to go to a left wing college. Um, mm. And. Uh, obviously, that's sort of some sort of nascent political. Uh, attitude sort of welling up there, I suppose. Um, sure. The gap... well, don't forget, my grandfather and my mother were both extremely political, so. Um... Well, I know you've told me before your mum was a Marxist, but your, your dad wasn't. Yeah. yeah. And my grandfather was a Marxist who was an early member of the NUM and was a big influence on me when I was little. Mm hmm. OK. And I, I, what I'm trying to do is just in the timeline, because that's sort of 95, 96, you make Icon on Earth and that's when GATS going on. Where does that mm. fit in with NAFTA? Did, did you see any of that stuff? The, um, yeah. the, the Perot and the uh, uh, Gore election? Uh, yes. Where, 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 but, but... where Gore got beaten by Clinton, didn't he? Yeah. The problem is, don't forget, um, I was in the science department um, at the BBC, and then um, go around what I was hired for was making science, history, philosophy documentaries. Um, it was very difficult political. Um, and during that time, the time you're talking about, I was twice approached directly by both the head of... Um, Science at BBC and the then head at Channel 4 to make a film. They, they requested that I make the film saying, uh, you know, steady on Roger because I know what you're, you think about this, but they wanted me to make a film saying um, climate change is, um, uh, is a hoax, is a load of old rubbish, mm -hmm. which I refused um, okay. because um, at that time I thought there was just no basis for making that claim. Um, but it, it, it clearly, I think, shows that there was a there was a political agenda within the mainstream um, um, broadcasters, which was had already made up its mind against um, um, a lot of environmental matters, but certainly anything to do with climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, it, it was difficult to, to do things that dealt with politics or finance. Um, the, the next one I, I managed to make was High Anxiety, which was um, the Mathematics of Chaos. And that was 2008, 2008, yeah, I suppose it was. I lose track of what was when. Um, and, and that was very definitely about the, the financial crisis that I could see coming. Yeah, I um, mean, that's... But again, I had to hide that that's what it was about under mathematics. Mm -hmm. But, but, uh, and it was, I mean, you know, it's not that I lied to the broadcasters. I always did deliver the thing I said I would, but I also tried to get it to do the thing that I wanted it to do at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that film was broadcast, we actually broadcast the day after Lehman Brothers went down. But there, so I was definitely, whatever, whatever you think the merits or demerits of the film were, I was on the money. Um, and I, 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 I clearly said this is going to happen at a time when all the all of the mm -hmm. the, the um, financial reporting and all of the current affairs people were looking the other way. Yeah. And once that went out, I then said to them, "Look, I was on the money. I've got another one I'd like to make in this area. Can I make it?" To which the reply was, um, "No, you're a science analyst. Leave this to the big boys at current affairs." Right. 
Because I, I, you know Charles Ferguson, don't you? Who made the Oscar-winning f- film um, about yeah. that crisis? Mm-hmm. Um, it was an inside job he made, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's funny because the film against climate change that's been made several times and was made, at, you know, yeah. uh, around that time. I, I think Channel Four did make it, didn't they? The uh, the Great Global the great Warming Swindle, swindle yeah. I think that one's called. The Great Global Warming Hoax or something. Yeah, I think it's called The Great Warm, uh, Global Warming Swindle. Um, oh, right, so, th- th- that, that time is when we kind of get to know you in the, 